Who would be on the first drone to fly from here to Los Angeles? And there might be a couple of hands. And then I would say, well, who would be on the first drone to fly from here to LA if it only cost you $25? Almost every hand goes up at that point. And so I think that there is a sliding scale of risk perception and the value to our lives. And so I think we will get to a place one day where we have both driverless cars and pilotless planes. And in fact, they will all be rolled into one and you will have your own personal flying car. And I think when we, we, everybody thinks about the Jetsons age and we think how cool that would be. We're not there today, but we will be there. As a academic, as a technologist, I am absolutely a futurist. I had this first career in the Navy. I was one of the Navy's first female fighter pilots and I flew A-4s first and then I flew F-18. Hornets, and it was during my time flying F-18s when I found out that computers could always land and take off planes better than I could, particularly on aircraft carriers, which made me rethink what I was doing with my choice of careers. The focus of my research at Duke is the intersection of humans and technology, trying to figure out what we call the role allocation. What should computers be doing? What should humans do, be doing? And how can they mutually support one another? So some of the current problems that we're looking at in my lab are the coming of the driverless cars. We're concerned that automation may be doing a pretty good job driving a car, but it's not going to be perfect. And if you have pretty good automation that's driving the car that allows you to text and drive, what happens when something goes wrong and you need to start paying attention all of a sudden and, um, and you're texting. And so we're trying to figure out how to allocate the functions in a car and how do we let the car know, the computer know, that perhaps you're texting and not really going to be a good driver. But we're also looking at issues in the future like air traffic control for high density, low altitude drones, which is effectively the Air Amazon Air Prime model, where we think that there might be lots of drones, not just from Amazon, but from other companies running around potentially delivering products, how are you going to do that such that they don't crash into each other or crash into you or crash into manned aircraft? The more and more systems get automated, we find ourselves worrying less about high workload and more about low workload or what we call in my lab our boredom studies. So we're finding that systems are being more and more highly automated, nuclear reactors for example, and military radar systems, for example, but even now driverless cars. So people are being asked to watch highly automated systems who do a pretty good job, but only ever now and then do you have to intervene. Most people's perceptions of drones has been driven by what they see in the media with the use of drones in Afghanistan and India, Pakistan, places around the country. And so I think there tends to be a negative perception of drones in general, which then affects commercial markets. Like, do we really want packages being bombed in, you know, into our living rooms by Amazon? Is that the image that people think of when they think of drones? But I think what's really interesting, what your average person does not realize is military drones are, for the most part, not that advanced. There's so much interest because it is a fundamentally game-changing technology. It's a much cheaper technology. It's the classic disruptive technology. It puts capability in people's hands who would not otherwise either have the money or the skills, for example. You don't need to be a highly trained pilot to be able to fly a drone. I like my drone research, but it's not what motivates me necessarily. What, I, what gets me excited about my research now is taking all the research that I did in the military for all those years and applying it to other domains. So for example, we're doing the emergency medical supply with drones and we're looking at trying to make wildlife conservation drone control software so that anybody at any range anywhere could use it for free. So I've, I've made a move, you know, the drone technology, it's so commonplace now, it's everywhere. It's not that exciting anymore. So for me now, the applications are the exciting thing.